So now that we have all of our forms cut and butt blocks on them and the old tabs are on them and everything's ready to go, we need something to put them on, right? And that's called a strong back. Now, uh, a strong back is a strong back is a strong back. It's basically for everything, most everything we do here, it's a box, right? The canoes, the kayaks, even some of the small skiffs and all that. It's all just a box. Uh, but there's probably good and bad ways to build that box. So, you know, over the years, we've built so many boats here. Uh, for instance, this drawing back here, I'm guessing this is probably, oh, a good 10 years old anyway. I know that because it's built out of dimensional lumber and we started using plywood a very, very long time ago. But what that means is if you build it right, you're not going to have any problems. It'll last a very long time, at, at least through the end of this project, if this is going to be your only boat. So because we build boats here that go anywhere from 8 feet to 20 feet on this kind of a strong back, we had to get a little bit creative, right? And if you're going to be building one at home and you're going to be building, let's say, a 14-foot boat, 14-foot kayak, well, getting 14-foot dimensional lumber or 14-foot plywood, um, if you do it dimensionally, is very expensive and it's probably going to be warped and flip around on you. And plywood, no, not too many people can buy 14-foot plywood. So we came up with a way of doing that. So let's take a closer look at what we're doing here. This strong back is built in three sections. I got this section, I got this section, and one that's a little bit harder for you to see is this one here. We'll move the camera in a second so that you can see that. But I basically have a little box in the center here, right? Now I made a mistake on previous DVDs um, if the ones 10, 12, 13, 14 years ago of, of being too specific with my strong back so people got all kind of crazy when the plans were a little bit different, okay? So here's the deal with the strong back. There is no set number for the depth, right? I like to put it at least eight inches deep, okay? You're probably going to build this out of plywood. You're going to go to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever your store is, Menards, whatever your store is around you. And you're going to get plywood and you're going to rip it down into at least 8 to 10 foot strips, basically, which will give you your sides. And it'll also give you these in the middle, these spaces that we put in the middle. And you're going to make a 1 8 foot section. And if you're building a 14 foot kayak, whenever you're building a canoe or a kayak, you tend to want to make your strong back a little bit shorter. Right? The reason for that is as you're stripping around the shear, you want it to be able to hang down without the strong bag getting in the way. So if I'm going to be building a boat, I usually like to make this at least six inches shorter to a foot shorter than whatever the boat's going to be. So if it's a 14-foot boat, I'll make a 13-foot strong bag. That way there I can hang the stems over six inches on either end, and when I strip the shear, nothing's in the way. It's nice and open and free and easy to get around. Okay? So the way we do that is, again, I would build an eight-foot section over here, I would build a five-foot section over here, and I would connect it in the middle. And in the middle, all we're talking about here is this box that we have right here in the middle, which is effectively the dimensions of the inside of your pieces that are on the ends. And then all we have to do is slide the two of them together, and this basically becomes like an accordion. We can move it in or out. I'm going to say this strong back, Boy, I tell you, it's probably had everything from an 8-foot to a 20-foot boat built on it. And we just, you know, it's just about had it. I don't think we're going to make it through too many boats with this one. But what we do do is we keep replacing the top, okay? So once we got that side and that side done and the things were screwed in here on the sides to make it nice and flat and straight, then we got to put a top on it, right? And we do replace the top for pretty much every boat. If we can reuse it, we do. But let's go over the top. Now generally, I like to make my strong backs about 10 inches wide, okay? And then I'll make my top about 12 inches wide. Now you can go, you know, whatever width makes you comfortable, but don't go past 12 inches and I wouldn't go below eight for sure. Um, and there's really no reason to, right? Because you're gonna be cutting it all out of plywood. The reason for that is if you go below 8, it'll start to maybe get a little bit flexible on you and you don't want that to happen. If it goes beyond 12, it starts to get too wide, so as you get towards the stems, you might have some issues. So just don't do that. Okay, so the tops. We ripped that out of really inexpensive stuff here because, like I said, generally because of the epoxy and the glue and everything that drips down on it, we might get two or three boats out of it. We'll sand it down and then we'll just chuck it out. But if you look closely at this, you'll see that 
it's gonna overhang this strong back by just about a half inch on either side, right? So I'm probably about 11 inches wide on this thing. And the reason for that is, you know, I keep it below 12 so I can get four out of, four out of a sheet of plywood. But if you look really closely, you'll see this kerf line right down the middle of the board here. And when we were putting those forms together, we kept talking about center line, center line, center line. Well, this is going to be the center line for your strong back that all of the forms are going to line up on, okay? So the way we do that is simple. Now, you can, you know, if you're a carpenter and you've got your chalk line handy, you can always pull a chalk line from one, one end to the other. But I find it easier here anyway, because we have a table saw, is I just split the board down the middle, flip it over, drive the blade down so it's only going up about a sixteenth, maybe a little bit more, so we can make sure we got a nice clear line, and throw it down the table saw, and that gives me a nice straight line all the way down. I do that on two boards, and I just line the two lines up. Okay, so from here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one. Well, actually, what I'm going to do is we're going to be building a 10-foot boat. So I'm going to be cutting this down to about nine feet, uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and put a top on it, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to put all these forms on and start to make this look like the shell of a kayak. But before I do anything else, I want to show you uh, what our strong back is sitting on. And we've been doing this since day one. Um, I mean, decades we've been doing this. And for us, it's a necessity because we're always building one, two, three, well, it's going to be four boats in here. So we got to roll them around and get them to different areas of the shop as we're doing different things to them. For you, this is your way to convince your spouse that if you do this over the winter, it won't get in the way of the cars in your garage. <laughs> and you'd be amazed the feedback we've gotten in the last 10, 15 years over these things. All it is, is very simply, is we build a cart on wheels, right? So this is just a two foot by four foot piece of plywood ringed by some um, two by four stock. We throw some quick, easy legs on there and we throw some wheels on there make sure the wheels lock because when you go to sand and do your you know everything from your varnishing to your glassing and all that you're going to want to make sure that the boat isn't moving around on you particularly when you're sanding but you will find that this will make you you know this takes a lot of pressure off to not get the project done you know too quickly you know if you can take your time and get it done because if you're doing it in your garage or in your basement and you need room to do something else like most people do you just wheel the boat over into the corner until you're ready to work on it again and you wheel it back um, when we first did these and showed them in our first video well, almost 15 years ago now um, it, it was kind of an afterthought and it's amazing how many people I just thrilled that we showed them how to do this. So consider this. I think uh, it'll make your whole boat project just a little bit easier. All right, let's get to uh, getting those forms mounted.